Choosing which UniFi router is going to work best in your home can be a real challenge, especially if you're new. I mean, there's a lot of options to choose from, each one kind of bringing its own flavor to the market space. So if you're new at this, it can be a bit overwhelming. So today I thought I would go over five different areas I like to look at when choosing a UniFi router in hopes it makes it simpler to choose which one is going to work best for you. Now, before we get into the video and you guys start spinning your wheels as to what makes the perfect router, please understand that any one of these routers is going to make a really nice option for your home network. They all do VLANs, they all do firewall rules, they all do VPN, they all do intrusion prevention of some kind, and many of the other advanced features that you get when you move to a UniFi system. It's these other five areas is where they start to differentiate themselves and may sway your decision. However, I also think it's important to understand how to research them. So we're going to go out to the website and use Ubiquiti's compare tool to kind of highlight some of these areas so you guys can find the exact information you need to pick the best router for you. All right, so the five areas I want to talk about today are as follows. The first one is how many devices need to be connected. Now, this probably won't be a big factor for most of you since I already mentioned any one of these is going to make a really nice option for your home network. However, some of you may have large network needs and some of you may have relatively small network needs and so it still may sway your decision so it's definitely worth talking about. The second thing is port speeds. 1 gig versus 2.5 gig versus 10 gigabit connections on your router. I think you will find this is one of the areas where they vary quite a bit and so this may actually force your hand on what router you need to choose. The third thing is multiple UniFi apps or just network. Is this just going to be a router for you or is it going to run multiple UniFi apps like UniFi Protect or UniFi Talk? The fourth thing is cameras. If this is going to be your NVR, there's some camera stuff we're going to want to make sure we sort out. Number of cameras, quality of cameras, how much retention you want will all play a factor because these all have different capabilities as it pertains to being an NVR. The fifth thing is form factor. Some of these are designed to be in a rack, while others are designed more to sit on a shelf or maybe on your desk. And so depending on where this is going to sit in your home may sway your decision. So we definitely want to talk about that as well. Hey everybody, I'm interrupting this video real quick to share something with you all that I'm extremely excited about. Now, if you've ever gone online to look for answers to your networking questions only to end up frustrated, you need to listen up because I've been in your shoes. I know what that feels like. And it's because of that, I've decided to create something I'm calling the Network Newbies Bootcamp. Now, this is great for my Unify newbies out there who want to build and secure a great network, but it isn't a course and it sure isn't a PDF. This is live instruction with me over the course of four days. Now, each of the days is going to be two hours long. The first hour is going to be 100% dedicated to Q&A. I want to answer as many of your questions as possible so you guys don't have to go out and look for these answers. Then we're going to do an hour of instruction and then I'm going to give you some homework because we're going to build this thing together and we're going to cover a lot over the course of these four days. The first day is going to be 100% dedicated to connecting your network in the right way. We want to make sure everything's connected correctly. The second day is going to be all about carving up your network and creating VLANs. It's easy to secure but yet are effective. The next day, we're going to jump into zone-based firewall policies and we're going to secure your network in the best possible way. And then we're going to end things with network optimization, network alerts, and Unify Protect Alarms because I know this is a tough area for a lot of you guys when you're doing this for the first time. And we are going to be talking about Unify Protect throughout each of the four days and how the camera system ties into this network. So just understand that. So if this is something you are interested in, I encourage you to go take a look in the description and click on the link to get some more information. Just know I am limiting the number of spots of people who can join. I want to make sure that who's ever in this boot camp, I am giving great service to and I get to all of your questions and get those answered. So I am limiting the spots. So if this is something that excites you or something you want to do so you can get that network off to a great start so it's easy to manage for years to come, I encourage you to act fast. All right, back to the video. All right, so let's compare a couple of these and I'm going to show you how we're going to go ahead and do that and then we're going to talk through this a little bit. So if you hover over any one of these, you can see some words come up and the word compare comes up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare four of these different devices by clicking the word compare next to each one that we want to look at. So we're going to do the Dream Machine Pro Max. We're going to look at the Cloud Gateway Fiber and we're going to look at the 
Dream Router 7. And then just to throw another one up there, we're just gonna do the Unify Express. Now you can compare any four that you want or any three that you want, whatever ones you're looking for. Um, these are the ones we're gonna use for this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the word compare here. And as you can see, there is just a ton of criteria in here. Remember we said in the beginning, these can all do VLANs and firewall rules and multicast and just all the basic advanced features that you get with Unify. So what we want to do to kind of sort this out a little bit more and narrow it down a bit is we're going to check this box, unique specs only. So this is going to kind of tell us the difference between these three. All right. And we're going to go through the five areas we talked about at the beginning and kind of see how they compare. And I'm even going to throw a sixth one at you, and that is price. Now, I don't like people to pick their router based on price because I think they limit themselves in ways they don't mean to. So, but if you find that mul these multiple devices will do the job, then absolutely you should go look at price as a secondary factor because if you can pay $279 and get what you need, you don't need to pay $599. You know what I mean? So I definitely think it should be a, a factor there, but I don't think it's how you should shop. I think you should shop based on what your needs are and what these things need to do for you. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the number of connected devices. Now, remember I told you, I don't think this is a big factor for most of you. These are all great home network devices. So, but these are the areas, where, these are the rows we're gonna be talking about. So the first one is the Manage Unify devices. This is like the number of switches and access points and talk phones and everything that this device can manage for you. So this is 200 plus, 50 plus, 30 and 30. And again, these are quite a bit less, right? However, not many homes have 30 access points and switches and things like that. They just don't. And so this is really gonna be plenty for most people. Um, the second row that I wanna look at is the simultaneous users connected. So this is like the number of devices connected to the network that it can manage easily, right? So 2000 plus, 500 plus, 300 plus, and 300 plus. Now I have seen people with networks this size. So, you know, these devices may not be a good option for you. However, 500 plus, 2000 plus, definitely. I mean, we don't really run into networks this size in a home. And remember these large scale really are small to medium sized business uh, grade devices. And so they need to handle more because they're gonna be used in those type of installations, okay? So the second thing was port speeds. 1 gig versus 2.5 gig versus 10 gig. So if we scroll down here, we're gonna to get to the default WAN ports and the port layout section, okay? So it's gonna list out some ports that are, that this is kind of that dual WAN feature, right? You can, with any of these, for the most part, you can hook up two internet providers for failover or load balancing. And so by default, a lot of them have two ports that are identified as WAN ports. However, the Unify Express 7 doesn't do any failover. It only has two ports on it, so, it's not listed in here, it only has one default WAN port because it can't do that. However, this area right below here, this is kind of what we're talking about. So one gig ports, 2.5 gig ports, there's 10 gig RJ45 ports and 10 gig SFP plus ports, which require a DAC cable or an SFP adapter to be in those ports, okay? Uh, you can't just plug an RJ45 connection into it. So the Dream Machine Pro Max has eight one gig ports. It has one 2.5 gig port. It has zero 10 gig RJ45, and it has two 10 gig SFP plus ports. So pretty powerful, pretty powerful guy. However, Mr. 279 over here doesn't have any one gig ports. It has four 2.5 gig ports. This one has one 10 gig RJ45 and two 10 gig SFP plus ports. So really kind of hitting a home run on this way right here. He's pretty powerful. And again, just a nice little device. Then as you go over, we have four 2.5 gig ports over here, no 10 gig RJ45, one 10 gig SFP plus, no SFP plus ports. This only has two ports, but both uh, one is a 10 gig RJ45 port and the other one is a 2.5. So again, judging by what you need in your network, this may be a area you might wanna pay attention to, okay? The next thing we wanna look at is the number of simultaneous uh, apps that you wanna run. Does this need to be a router for you only or is it gonna do other things? And so you, Ubiquiti has kind of an application suite that it can run, Unify Protect, 
which is cameras, Unify Access, which is like door access, Unify Talk, which is voice over IP, and then Unify Connect, which allows you to actually manage some of your IoT devices and things like that. Um, it also has some other features as well. So if you plan on using any of those things, you're gonna need a device that can do it. And so this is the area that kind of talks about that. And I threw the Unify Express up here on purpose because it can only be a network router. It can't do any of these other things, and so that's why it's got dashes there. So again, if this is important to you, you're definitely gonna to wanna to look at this section of the specs. All right, so the next thing is cameras. Now, I do want you to pay attention to cameras because I think this is another area where they vary um, quite a bit. The uh, large-scale devices have a 3.5-inch drive bay that allows you to put a eight or a 16 or 24 terabyte hard drive in there. So you can do the largest amount of retention with these guys because you can put whatever size drive you want into them. It also has the horsepower to run more cameras. So this one can run 50 HD cameras, 25 2K or 15 4K or a combination of each. It can't do all of them but it could do like eight 4K and eight 2K. You know what I mean? Like it could do a combination of these, right? As you get into these other ones over here, you're gonna see this drop off considerably. They just don't have the horsepower and the storage for Unify Protect, okay? So you can see the Gateway Fiber here can do 15 HD cameras, eight 2K, and only five 4K cameras. And the Dream Router 7 is smaller yet, five, two, and one. So again, if Unify Protect is part of your conversation and you want your router to do it, you may have to look over here. It just depends on how many cameras you're gonna have, what quality camera, and how much retention you wanna do. Now, the way this guy does it is, is he has an NVMe SSD drive that slides into it, and they have a one terabyte option and a two terabyte option. You do have the option to buy a third party um, SSD drive However, please be careful because there could, you could run into some compatibility issues. But that drive is not gonna go anywhere near the eight or 16 or 24 terabytes that you can do over here. I mean, you could go back six months if you only had a handful of cameras and you put a lot of storage in this thing. Plus this one here has two hard drive bays. It's one of the things that kind of makes it special. So you could even do two 24 terabyte hard drives in this thing if you wanted to. So it just blows these other ones away. This one, the, the, the middle series here, the Cloud Gateway, the Cloud Gateway Max, they have that SSD with NVMe, and then the Dream Router 7 only has some internal storage and an SD card slot for expanded storage. So it's really not designed to do cameras. Now, this is a good segue here. Uh, I wanna just call this out. If cameras are important to you, and you wanna be able to grow, and you don't wanna limit yourself, guys, I encourage you, do look at the UNVR. Um, it's 199 bucks. It's four drive bays. You can put whatever size drives you need to put into it. It does RAID and everything. It, and it runs Unify Protect only. It's designed to just be a camera in VR. Really nice option. I really like mine. And it just takes the pressure off of your router doing that for you, um, in my opinion. Now you might still wanna do use Connect or, or Access or something, which is fine. So again, maybe this multiple apps plays a factor in this. However, um, if cameras are important to you and you just don't want to, you know, go this route, you could buy the UCG fiber, which checks off all the boxes you need, the port speeds and everything, and then add a UNVR and, and have a really nice, um, advanced, uh, camera system that you can grow into over the years. So I, I know this video isn't about that, but I just want to, it's a time to talk about it because don't let the router decision 100% influence you based off of the camera thing. Um, the UNVR, it really is a great option. All right, and so the last thing is re uh, form factor. So as you can see, we have rack mount, we have uh, more of a compact size. These can sit on a desk or sit on a shelf pretty easily. Um, and same with these two here. So I just call out the form factor. If you have a rack, man, there's nothing better than a nice rack mounted solution. I think you'd have to buy a shelf to set this one on or set it on another piece of equipment, maybe set it on your switch. Um, be careful with that though, because heat can kind of transfer between the two devices. I recommend putting it on a shelf. You could also go out to Etsy and people 3D print um, rack mounts all the time for these. So, you know, you might be able to find something that way if you do want to rack mount it, but form factor might play a, play a role in your decision. 
All right guys, so there you have it. As you can see, not a big deal to compare these different units and find the right one for you. And I think by looking at those five criteria, I know some of you might have some more, but those five criteria right there are really differentiating factors between each of the different models. So take some time, start comparing them, whittle down your results and get it down to two or three that you're trying to choose between. And I think you guys will have really good luck with that. Now, the one other thing I will throw at you is maybe future-proofing your network a little bit. Um, a lot of you, if you have the option and the budget to maybe buy something a little nicer because someday you might get faster internet speeds or you can see your network growing or your kids are starting to get into an age where more devices are gonna be joining the network, it's not a bad time to do it. Sometimes buying something a little bit more beefy isn't always a bad idea because it'll save you from having to replace that device down the road. However, you know, in a lot of the areas we talked about, most of these routers really checked off a lot of the boxes. And so, you know, I'll use my house, for example, when I first moved in, cameras wasn't a big deal to me. I didn't roll, pull any cabling for cameras. However, after being here one year, it was decided that we wanted to add cameras. And so I had to add those cables. I had to add a whole bunch of cameras. And now I have seven cameras on my network, which if I would have had the UDR7, I might have had a problem. So Ultimately, just kind of understand your needs may change over time. And like I mentioned in the video, a simple solution is just to look at the UNVR and do a camera system completely separate as well. So again, I wouldn't have pinned myself in a corner, but at the end of the day, I might have had to buy a future device to accommodate that growth. And so it's just something I like to throw out there for you guys to think about. All right, guys, as always, thanks for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Remember, if you are interested in the new boot camp I mentioned earlier in the video, please check out the description down below for that. Spots are filling up and I hope to see you there. Um, if you have any questions, please leave comments and we'll see you guys down the road in a future video.